Uh, hi, everyone. I just uh, wanted uh, to clarify a few things about uh, the discussion boards in class, um, and I figured making a short video would be uh, probably the easiest way to transmit that information. Um, so the discussion boards um, in an online class uh, are a pretty substantial portion of um, the activities that we do. They take the place of that in-person or sort of in-class discussion, and really the, the purpose of them is for you to engage with the material and think about it and then demonstrate to me that you understand uh, the concepts that we're talking about. Um, in a practical sense, discussion boards constitute our class participation. And in this class, um, uh, class participation, excuse me, class participation is 10% of um, the, the overall uh, final grade. Um, so let me just share with you a couple of uh, sort of concrete expectations that I have for discussion. Uh, for discussion boards. Um, I expect that uh, initial posts are made by Thursday each week. Um, Thursday at the end of the day, so 11.59 p.m. is perfectly fine with me. Um, I realize um, uh, that this may present a problem, uh, so I'm willing to be flexible about this expectation uh, this week. However, if this is going to present a problem, um, consult with me by a phone or, or, or by email. Um, so after those initial posts are made by Thursday, I, uh, I expect a, a response to others, um, your colleagues, at least two of your colleagues, are made by Friday. And then I expect responses to those who commented on your post by Sunday. Uh, and typically what I expect is a minimum of one response to each person who has responded to your post. Um, everything is due by Sunday. Uh, so as a reminder, a weekend class runs from Monday to Sunday, so everything is due by by Sunday, uh, and any posts that are made after that week has closed uh, will not earn uh, will not earn credit. Again, I'm willing to be flexible here um, in in week four, uh, but moving forward, um, these expectations will become um, a, a little bit a little bit uh, more strict. Again, if this presents a problem or this poses um, uh, a challenge for you, uh, let me know. Give me a call. Shoot me an email so that we can. Uh, so that we can come up with uh, with a solution. The other thing I want to emphasize here is that well, what I'm uh, what I'm um, listing here is really a minimum. So if you're interested in responding to to more than one or more than two of your colleagues, you may. Um, if you're interested in continuing a conversation, you may do that uh, as well. Uh, a couple of other uh, expectations. You do not need to include citations or references in uh, in your posts. Um, and this is really because we wouldn't include references if we were in person having having an in-class discussion. Uh, so I don't expect them on the, the written discussion boards. However, if you choose, you may um, uh, sort of make reference to the document or the source text in, in the content. Uh, and I put an example uh, on the uh, PowerPoint slide there for you to see. Um, I strongly discourage you from using quotes. Um, this is uh, the graduate level, and quotes really are not appropriate. Um, uh, this is mentioned in the syllabus. Go back and take a look if you need to. And again, consult with me if if um, if uh, if you if you uh, have a preference for quotes. I can help you move your writing to the uh, to to the uh, to the level that's expected of um, of graduate students. Um, a couple of other things that do count, uh, clarity, grammar, punctuation, spelling, so on and so forth. Um, the single best piece of advice I can give you is make sure you proofread your posts. Um, you can go back and edit them if you need to. Um, the other thing you can do is, is write out your post in a Word document and then copy and paste uh, that document, or the, the, the content of that document in, into Moodle, whatever is easiest for you. Um, the other thing that I'm really sort of interested in seeing, this is a little bit more uh, abstract um, with respect to expectations, but um, discussion boards are really about your reasoning or your engagement with the material. I'm, I'm not really concerned about a, a correct answer or a right answer. These are, are fairly infrequent in social work. And in an ethics class, they're, they're um, there's really no such thing as a right answer. There's only a such thing as a sort of well-reasoned answer. So what you need to do is explain yourself and justify your conclusions. Uh, when it comes to writing, uh, sort of in a concrete uh, level, 
um, most questions that uh, that I pose and most responses that you're going to uh, make to, to colleagues um, can't be one or two sentences long. They require some some thought and expect uh, an explanation. Um, from a from a length standpoint, that probably means that that most things that you're writing about are in the the range of four to six sentences at a minimum. Uh, certainly more is fine as well. Um, Responses to others. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of things here that I think. Oops. Just move myself up here. Um, that I think will be a couple of things that I think will be useful to hear, uh, to you here. Uh, responses to others uh, really must be substantive. Um, replies that consist of "nice job" or "great post," uh, or "I agree," uh, really doesn't earn a point. Uh, or really, you know, won't earn earn points. Uh, responses should really further um, the content of the discussion. So what I've listed here are just four basic um, templates that you're welcome to use. You're welcome to borrow these. You don't need to attribute them to me at all. Um, but these are sort of starting points for uh, create or crafting responses to, um, to your colleagues. So, for example, I found your content about blank to be insightful because of X reason. Um, do you think that X is also important when thinking about, you know, X, Y, and Z? Uh, and then a few others there. Again, you're welcome to use these. They don't, uh, they don't mention nice job or, or great post or I agree. Um, this is really designed to um, help you craft responses that will further dis um, uh, the discussion. And of course, uh, responses should always be um, respectful, thoughtful, and, uh, and professional. Um, the uh, so as I mentioned a, a couple of slides ago, class participation is about ten percent, or is ten percent of the final grade. There's five discussions. That means uh, each discussion is worth two percent of the final grade. Uh, we're in week four right now, so uh, and we do have a discussion for this week. Um, so what I will do in week five is I will email you with written feedback of your discussion post thus far. Um, so that you have an idea of, of where it is you stand. That also will open up a chance for us to have some dialogue about, um, uh, you know, any problems you're having in class or, or any questions you have about expectations or anything of that nature. Um, so each discussion is going to be worth about 2%. Uh, we had obviously a discussion in week one, um, and then, uh, and then, uh, one in week two, and then we've got one here in, in week four, and then a couple more. Uh, uh, spread throughout sort of the rest of, of the semester. Um, so this week's discussion is uh, broadly about your reaction to the code of ethics. Um, right at the uh, at the um, the uh, the splash page to uh, the discussion board, uh, I've listed six questions for you to consider. Uh, I don't expect that you um, respond to them all, but I uh, I am looking for thoughtful and, and substantive responses to, to maybe four of them. Uh, more is fine. Um, I will leave that uh, I will leave that up to you. I don't expect that you list out the questions that you're responding to, but uh, I should be able to detect uh, which of, of those questions you're responding to in, in your response. Um, um, yeah, so again, you're responding to the six questions that I um, that I pose there. Um, if something's unclear, uh, or you have you have um, you know uh, questions again. You're welcome to post in that Ask the Instructor form or shoot me an, uh, shoot me an email. Lastly, um, many of the con I want to emphasize something I said in the uh, introductory video uh, way back in week one. Um, this is a, lear a, a learning process, and learning is difficult and requires an awful lot of patience. Um, the MSW is is a degree really that comes with a, a license. You're able to sit for licensure, and that's really a, a license to practice independently. So <clears throat> that means many of the concepts that we're learning about um, don't have uh, don't have right answers or don't necessarily have concrete answers, and that's part of what makes learning to be an MSW fun. But it's also an interesting and, and sort of intellectually stimulating. Uh, but it's also um, what makes learning to be an MSW uh, really difficult. Um, we uh, um, um, often think about tasks associated with learning uh, based on the work of a guy named Benjamin Bloom, and he came up with uh, uh, Bloom's taxonomy here, and this is by and large a, a, um, a, a developmental theory of, of learning here. 
uh, and where we are as, as social work uh, MSW students is in the applying and the analyzing realm. Uh, you'll notice this is shaped like a, like a pyramid, so as you get further and further up, there's fewer and fewer people um, at each level. And uh, indeed, we are um, we're studying for an MSW degree, um, which uh, is something that, uh, that fairly few people have uh, all things being being equal, so uh, your your discussion board posts um, and your and your uh, your responses to others should really reflect um, a level of application and a level of, of analysis that uh, um, that corresponds to uh, sort of the responsibilities of of an MSW. Uh, again, I want to emphasize: if you have questions or you have problems or you're unclear about any of this, you're welcome to get in touch with me. Uh, I'm happy to help. All right. Thanks for watching.